What's going on guys? We're back in the shop today working on the bird. We're actually going to do more of a build breakdown today. Uh, all the new parts we got, everything Matt at Midwest Chassis set us up with uh, as far as brakes, suspension, steering, everything we got going on. As you can see with that giant pile of stuff behind me. So we're going to get a little bit into more depth and detail as far as, you know, all the parts that we have for it. So uh, let's get down to it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with pretty much the heart and soul, the front end. Uh, we went ahead and chose the Stage 5 front end kit from Midwest Chassis, which includes the Chromali uh, K-member here, which is set up for a manual steering rack. There are lower control arms, upper control arms, uh, all our suspension mounts. I mean, pretty much everything on the front end is straight from Midwest Chassis. So uh, just to elaborate a little bit more, they have a built-in tow hook. Uh, this is the manual rack right here mount. And uh, you know this thing is made out of Chromali. It's super lightweight and a great basis to start for our front end. All right, so pretty much what we have laid out here is gonna be our uh, Pinto rack, the chromoly steering column, along with the steering shaft that we have to cut down to fit once I get fitted to the car, and the crash bars. So uh, basically, if we do end up doing a wheelie, we end up coming down on these before anything else on the front end. Ends up saving, you know, uh, the belly pan, the oil pan, you know, pretty much everything underneath the car. Just a little bit extra insurance and an easy replaceable item. We're gonna go ahead and get a little bit more in depth and open this stuff up. So these are going to go mounted up underneath the K-member. That way, uh, in case of a wheelie, these end up getting bent and are, like we said, easily replaceable and end up saving a lot of parts on the front end. The uh, adjustable steering shaft right here. So when I get fitted into the car, uh, we do have an adjustable length, you know, depending how close or how far away I want the steering wheel from me. And, uh, still brand new in the package right here is that into a steering rack. So it's gonna be full manual rack, obviously no power steering on this thing. All right, so the next components in the uh, Midwest Chassis Stage 5 front end package are gonna be the lower control arms, which are uh, primed on pretty much every end. Everything's adjustable. Uh, again, this stuff weighs absolutely nothing. Uh, we have the adjustable upper A-arm bracket, so we have several different settings. Uh, supreme adjustability is the key. So. We're going to have everything we need to the track to make any changes necessary. Uh, so lastly, we're going to have the upper A-arms. Now, obviously, I already explained we have that adjustable upper A-arm bracket. So, uh, you know, we can put this thing realistically anywhere we want there and set up the front end however we need to. All right, so what we got in front of us here is going to be the uh, lightweight chromoly spindles. As you notice from the shape, uh, these are dead straight down, not curved like a factory setup. So. Basically, that's going to limit us to a skinny front wheel, but this being a race car, I mean, we really don't care about that. A lot stronger than the factory setup and a very nice touch to the front end. What else we got going on here is going to be the uh, tie rod ends, the bump steer kit. So uh, this is going to allow us to obviously adjust our toe and uh, limit any travel on the front wheels. All right, so we're going to go ahead and continue with quite possibly is my favorite part of the car. Uh, all the brake components from Strange. So we actually have their dual reservoir master cylinder right here, along with the uh, adjustable brake pedal rod, the billet uh, adapter plate in order to go from, uh, you know, we're not running a brake booster anymore. So this is gonna mount directly to the firewall and allow us to mount up our dual reservoir master cylinder. Line lock in order for us to lock up the front brakes uh, when we apply a severe amount of brake pressure, hit the line lock, it's gonna allow us to do a burnout and not push through the front brakes. We have a Willwood proportioning valve in order for us to dial in, you know, that front to rear brake ratio. We are running race strange brakes all around. I haven't received the rears as of yet, but they are on order. We have a super nice four piston caliper for the front, extremely lightweight, along with everything else on this build. Black rotor here it actually has cutouts all the way around it as well in order to save weight. They also provide the uh, wheel hub that has serviceable Timken uh, wheel bearings in it. So, you know, we're not gonna be stranded with a sealed unit or anything like that. And lastly, we're gonna have their caliper mount bracket, which this thing, I have no idea how it's this light, but uh, I mean, all this stuff is of amazing quality. Ray Strange has helped us with our brakes, to our front shocks. You know, we have a ton of products from them and this is some of the stuff that's uh, the most highly recommended on the market. All right, so as far as the uh, front shocks are concerned, we went ahead with a uh, strange double adjustable unit. So we're gonna have compression and extension settings on these. 
Uh, they come with uh, obviously the thrust washers and everything like that for a good install. And we were also set up with a 300 pound spring from Hypergo. Conveniently enough, I think they match the car pretty well. All right, so moving on to a little bit of more safety equipment on the car. We're actually gonna put two of the Kirky uh, Series 55 all aluminum seats in here, along with the uh, really nice seat covers that they provide. These things actually have a ton of cushions, so they're a lot more comfortable than you think they are. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw one on real quick, you guys can see it. Just uh, some quick snaps on the buttons on the sides. So this thing comes on and off extremely fast. And you might be wondering, this is probably one of the widest Kirkies you've seen. Well, we intend on taking this car on drag week and uh, these tend to be like the I like cake size. So uh, we definitely want to be comfortable in the car, but we want to be safe at the same time. So continuing on safety, we ended up choosing a race clip six point cam lock. So we have the dual, basically anti-submarine belt here, lap belt, shoulder belts. The cam lock is really nice instead of the standard option. So, you know, extremely easy to put on. And if, you know, there happens to be an emergency, we need to get out of the car real quick. It's literally just turn the knob, everything comes free. Each one has our individual slot, comes out super easy. Maintaining your battery in between rounds is always a concern. Uh, one really nice touch we're going to add here is a gas door charging port. So obviously we're going to have a fuel cell in this car. This is entirely unnecessary. We have no need for it. So once we get all that ripped out, this is going to go ahead and mount behind it. So we have a nice clean OEM panel that looks like it's supposed to be there with an extremely nice touch on that uh, charging port. Our, our battery charger will have a permanent fixture on it that just plugs directly in, rotate, and the battery is going to begin charging. Part of building a race car is making stuff easy to work on. In between rounds, we can't have issues like this. You know, you, you imagine you're working on a million things, you go to crank the car and you got no battery and you got to get up to the starting line within a matter of minutes. You know, we need to eliminate those variables uh, you know, from our program. We ended up choosing a uh, Grant wheel along with a strange quick release on the back of it. And uh, two buttons here that you know, we haven't decided the complete layout of the car yet, but obviously we're gonna have a uh, Boost scramble button, a trans brake, bump box, you know, we gotta have all the switches at our hands to try and keep our hands on the wheel. The uh, Hearst quarter stick, we're gonna be running a three speed TH400, uh, reverse manual valve body, so it's already set up for that. So, all the way in park, right there, park, reverse, neutral, first gear, second gear, third gear. So everything's just pulling straight down. Uh, we're also use, utilizing a Hurst uh, quick release. That way we can get the shifter in and out of the car real easy, just in case, you know, we got to end up working behind the dash or any wiring, anything like that. The car's also gonna have a removable trans tunnel. So, uh, you know, we can make pulling the trans super easy. And uh, last on the table here, we have a, an electric water pump from Mazir. This goes welded directly onto the radiator. So we're gonna do a uh, flat bottom mount in order to maximize our space in the engine bay. You know, flat bottoms have been run traditionally, even cars on drag week and stuff like that. Uh, they don't hinder cooling. Uh, yeah, they are on the bottom of the car and laying flat, but they still receive a ton of air. We got fans pulling through them and we alleviate, you know, a ton of space issues in the front of this car. All right, so as far as mounting the engine up, uh, we're not gonna be using any motor mounts. Our K member does not have the provision to use any solid motor mounts. We're gonna be using a motor plate from Rock Solid Motorsports and a mid plate that will be integrated into our 25-3 cage from AEI. Basically, instead of a motor mount on the side of the engine, this can actually cause cylinder distortion uh, under high amounts of boost. So the cylinder is gonna become out of round. Obviously, that's gonna hurt the piston rings and we'll end up breaking ringlands and possibly doing even more damage than that. So the motor plate, allows that engine to not have any fixed mounting positions, uh, meaning that under those high boost levels, we're not gonna have a lot of cylinder distortion. So along with it being easily removable out of the car, we're actually gonna be adding rigidity to the car because this becomes an element of the chassis and we're gonna be eliminating that cylinder distortion issue. All right, so moving on to the motor, uh, we're actually gonna be running a iron block six liter. 
Um, the first incarnation of this build is honestly going to be a uh, budget-based iron block. So we're going to go stock crank. We're going to do rods, pistons, uh, probably sourcing them from Texas Speed. And uh, the probably the cheapest uh, turbo manifolds you can buy from Flowtech. Uh, I think these things are 178 bucks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and build our own hot side of the turbo kit. We've truly never fabricated anything before, but what better time to learn than now? This currently has some 317 heads on it. We're probably going to go with a ported 799, uh, something along those lines. I mean, truly the motor side of things has not been truly ironed out yet. But uh, as soon as we're done with chassis, this project is going to move very quickly. So you're definitely going to be seeing a lot more of this in the future. Now that we have all the pieces to the puzzle laid out, Things are going to start moving very quickly. we got to get ready for chassis. We're really aiming for March 1st. So I know this episode moved a little bit slower, but we really wanted to give you guys some detail on the parts we're going to be using on this car. Uh, on the next episode, we're going to go ahead and start installing all the products on the front end. Things are going to start progressing extremely fast from this point on. All right, guys, so I hope you're enjoying the content. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the videos. Please, anything you do can help us. Uh, until then, we'll catch you guys next time.